Hey guys, Language Hacker here. I wanted to show you guys the Shaman deck I used to win an Open Cup. Um, it's okay on ladder as well. Still not super great into Druids because they're still running Smothering Starfish, but overall the deck seems pretty good against uh, a roughly aggressive meta because of the tools you have to either freeze the board, remove their early aggressive tools, and in some cases heal back up a little bit. So let's review the deck that I have. Okay, now that we're out of the way with that awkward intro, here's the deck. Uh, you might recognize this from uh, some lists you might have seen in the past week or so. It says Burn Shaman. I'm a, a couple cards off of what the HS Replay list, I think, has. And I've teched it a bit for uh, a tournament meta. But I think it's fine on ladder too, honestly. Depending on what you're facing, I'll tell you what you can replace if you are seeing more of one thing than another. So let's go over the main things that this deck does. This deck has Snowfall Guardian. Macaw, because very, very good. We got some Wildpaw Caverns. Very good stats. Brucon, here cards are just busted right now. Windchill for card draw, Multicaster for card draw. Because of that, we're also running uh, Scalding Geyser, Dredge, Fire Spell, which works for Multicaster. We're running Frostbite, um, Maelstrom Portal, which helps deal with the aggressive decks that we're seeing right now. Pirate Warrior, uh, Agro Demon Hunter, I guess the Mirror as well. And even against non-aggressive decks, if you do build up a board and you start freezing it, you can eventually just buy Luminescence and Maelstrom Portal. With all the spell damage you get, it usually just wipes out boards. So then you don't even have to focus on like a burn game plan. You just clear the board and then you win with whatever you have left over. Um, we have Cookie, which again is very, 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 very good against aggressive decks because it has its initial two lifesteal. And then you have six more points of lifesteal after because of the weapon, which also lets you clean up the early minions and can push face in other matchups. I've included one copy of a Viper because there were some Paladins hanging around. And honestly, it's decent against Rogue and Demon Hunter as well. Don't think we want to be running two, but one seemed okay. If you're not facing any of these weapon uh, classes on ladder, you can just cut that out for something else. I think the HS Reaper list has two Trogs. Um, Trog felt kind of meh, unless it was exactly on play uh, against... A, pretty much on the play. So going first uh, on turn one. Otherwise, it just felt kind of meh. Uh, but I still did want to have some way to spend mana early on turns one or three, because this deck seems like it passes if you don't have a good uh, two drop. Uh, two drops, Bolner, Sleepbreaker. So if you miss on those two, it feels kind of yucky. So I, I I liked having an extra play on one. And even if you don't have the two, you can Hero Power. And then if you draw it by turn three, you can still go Hero Power, Trog. And it's not great, but it still throws out some extra stuff on the board. It lets you spend mana. Um, in terms of development, don't be afraid to just throw this out on turn three. Because tempo is very, very good. Um, in some matchups, you can consider holding it. Uh, late game, you can go like Radiance, Discounted Bio, Discounted Bio. Then you get some extra spell damage with Geyser because of the Fire Spell damage. Um, and the discounted Lightning Bolt. So it can save you a lot of mana late game if you're setting up for a huge OTK from hand, but most matchups right now, you're just going to want to tempo this out when it's good, when you have mana to spend. Maybe pair it together with a, a wind shell, you know? Gain some armor out of that. A general game plan. Play stuff. Mulligan for Wild Power or School Teacher. Um, if you're on coin, you can consider keeping one or two of these. If you're on the play, I would lean away from School Teacher against aggressive decks because... By turn four, let's say Demon Hunter will already have a full board. So you're going to want either two drops, you're going to want Maelstrom Portal to help deal with the early game, um, probably a Geyser or a Frostbite to help deal with the first minion or two. And if you have those, then you can consider keeping the uh, slow cards against them. Uh, against slower decks, you can consider keeping Multicaster because you just want more card draw. You're not going to kill them by turns five, six, seven. So you want the you know your long-term game plan to, to flourish, and that means drawing cards. Uh, otherwise, I pretty much always keep Sleepbreaker. I don't always keep Bolner, but I've been keeping him a lot more frequently uh, lately just because it's nice to spend mana. It doesn't completely contest some of the early aggressive minions, but this together with Maelstrom Portal can help clean up uh, some of the early things that people play down. Um, also, this might force them to deviate from their play. Instead of developing, they'll they'll use spells and resources to remove your Bolner so that you can't, I don't know, follow it up with who knows what, a Sleepbreaker or a, a school teacher. But I, I've seen people get confused pretty heavily, so... Keeping Bolner is probably just good as well. I don't think I'd keep Winchell too much. Geyser seems okay. You can play this on one as well. If you don't have a clear game plan over the, over the first few turns of the game, you can play a Scalding Geyser on one to just try and dredge, plan out the next few turns, and based off of that, uh, identify what card you want to put on top of your deck. Uh, I would also keep Maelstrom Portal against Aggro, in case I didn't mention that. I would also keep Cookie against Aggro. Cookie you can probably keep against almost every deck. You don't have many proactive threes, and it's just... Fine. It's a 3-2-3, which doesn't fight too much for board, but then you have a weapon that just lasts for the, not the rest of the game, but for quite a few turns from there, which is pretty nice. It's basically a fireball on a stick with lifesteal and the Murloc tag, which doesn't matter that much. Uh, so how do you win with this game? Tempo, good. Freeze opponent's faces, good against Pirate Warrior, DH, Rogue. 
um, against decks that create wide boards. You can set up for a Snowfall Guardian game plan after you've done some chip damage. Uh, or if you have been behind the whole game, you don't have any chip damage and you Snowfall Guardian and you try to set up a bigger board, Snowfall Guardian, into a Macaw. And then by that point, you will have enough mana to go like buy Luminescence, a couple of burn spells, and then you hit them in the head with a, with a Snowfall Guardian or the Macaw that you've frozen the board with. And that closes up the game. Or, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have enough burst for that, you can try setting up a Bioluminescence Maelstrom Portal to clear the board, and then you just have your remaining board, which will win against most tempo decks. Against control decks, you generally will be going for an OTK-style game plan where you have to uh, uh, amass resources. And school teacher is very, very good at that because the 1-1 one, one Noggling is a one-mana minion that uh, is very good with Bioluminescence. Um, first of all, you can get Bioluminescence on the Naga, which then transforms the three-mana Bioluminescence to one-mana Bioluminescence because it's just, it's just insane. But even if it doesn't battle cry a Bioluminescence... There's Feral Spirits, there's Spirit Mount, there's um, Charge Call. So for one mana, you can get multiple things on the board, which helps with your Bioluminescence burn game plan. Um, so it's generally important to keep uh, an eye out on the Noggling spells that you're offered and try to uh, pair them together with a game plan that you have for that particular game, whether it's a slower game or a faster game. If you know you're against a control deck, you consider Brukan as well, because this is just value over time. It's quite slow, so I don't know if I would solo keep it, because you still want to be doing stuff in the meantime, but it, it can be a consideration. Uh, that's about it. The deck can do some very wacky stuff based on uh, what your school teachers give you, and uh, I have some very fun games that I think you guys are going to enjoy, so stick around uh, for that after the guides. Yeah, play the deck. Seems okay in the meta. Uh, Druid's not great, because they're still running uh, smelling Starfish for the most part, which means that you can't Snowfall Guardian their big boards and then try to kill them, because sometimes they'll just silence and kill you. But you can still get some early pressure with minions, and honestly, after the nerfs come out, I believe uh, the... Depending on when this video comes out, the patch might be live or not with some of the nerfs, and maybe Druid is less playable at that point, and then this is less of a problem. But the deck's pretty solid. I would recommend trying it. Here's some cool games. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to check out the other videos I have. There's a bunch of guides and a lot of meta decks. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Put them all here against Rogue. Maelstrom Portal, Frostbite, Frog, Sleep Breaker. Never assume your opponent's deck. I mean, when I see a brand and a green thumb, it, it leads heavily towards the uh, that one deck. Brand Ivis combo, it's not even good. Because the the second Okay, there's a cap I see. I could play Bolner, but this contests, which makes me happy. They kept three other cards. Green Thumb Gardener, it's a 6 mana 5 5 and Druid. It was running some early versions of uh, Ramp Druid, but it ended up not being good. Oh, I guess I lost. Weapon off the top, Viper. Not Viper. Do I still kill it? I guess. Yeah, the brand doesn't go off in the second half of uh, Ivis. Or rather, the second brand doesn't do anything. Because the Battlecar reads spend your remaining mana crystals. Am I just face tanking that? The problem is if I one-shot, I don't do anything else, so yeah, I guess I am face tanking that. The one chill's fine. Oops.
Leave it in. 1-1 one, one was the worst possible thing I could have hit here. Holy crap, was that bad. Pufferfish just cleans up now. Okay, Puffer Fist is not there. That's very good for me. Vessel. Okay, this is a very good time to Snowfall Guardian. Because... I mean, I should trade these because they're going to get pinged off. Even if they have the Wombo combo with Poisonous, it doesn't matter because they can't swing the dagger this turn. Come with me now. How many spells have we played? I don't think we've played an actual Winchell. Grab a Toa, that's fine. I haven't played Nature. I haven't played a Winch. No, I haven't even played a Natural Winchill. My Multicaster doesn't draw at all. It's not very good. But I double windshield here, right? I could do this to get armor, but I don't need the health. I just need cards. Which, I mean, I guess I could have done this first, but here we are. Okay, we're getting there on the damage front. The hero power doesn't matter. Neither does Viper. Nice. So Bioluminescence is lethal, and another burn spell is lethal, which is what I was trying to set up. That is not enough. It is enough. Cool. Oi, 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 cool. Tempo Bolner, maybe? Toss the rest. Okay. Never trog on one. Get in there, Bolner. Do I keep one or two spell lashes and playing small spell mage? Probably one. If you have two, your pop up is generally a little bit worse. I think coining here is worth it. Farsight seems very, very good. Especially if the Bolner sticks.
Now they're probably just wrathing this, but innervate, nourish, and wrath. No wrath. Okay. All right, guys, we're popping off. Let's go. Pick me, pick me. Very nice. Okay. Is that good enough? I mill a card if I do anything else, unless I use burn. Maybe that's fine, though. Probably is fine. I think the extra draw is probably worth it. Damage? Oh, no, this is in my hand. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, is this off of a Noggling? This was almost lethal. I could have pushed six more damage here. And we will gladly have a Bioluminescence for zero mana. Alright, let's ship it. I didn't want to tempt with the Bioluminescence there because they're likely to clear. Okay. So zero mana by luminescence. We have a geyser and a bolt in hand. So two burn spells. Gonna see if this is lethal. It appears that it is lethal. Turn six lethal. Nice. What a cool game. Give me that second scroll. Very nice game. All right, Bolner. <clears throat> Bolner Gaming. Upper Fist bad for me. Cannoneer's bad for me. They draw the weapon this turn. Uh-huh.
the Chargers in some changes. You saw the HC statistically is doing well. So Celtic, I don't know what you want from me. It looks like you've already looked up stats and you've come to some conclusions. Any deck that you can pilot efficiently will get your legend. So find something that looks good, that has the good stats, which is like anything. In like tier 1 or tier 2 or whatever, depending on what stat uh, website you're looking at. Uh. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not upset at you. I'm just saying that asking streamers generally isn't the best thing. They can give you suggestions, but. It's generally a feel thing. I think the best thing to climb with is something that you enjoy. So I'd recommend looking at decks that are statistically decent and then deciding on one that fits your playstyle. The best thing you can do is play a deck that you enjoy. Because learning is easier. You have a, a more fun time playing it. You tilt a lot less often. I was hoping to get like uh, Feral Spirits here or Charge Call so I could go this plus... Bioluminescence plus Maelstrom to clean up the board. Fortunately, it looks like that's not going to happen, and I've lost the game. Just keep going the mulligan. Uh-huh, very funny. Wow. I died a smite. But I don't think I win otherwise. I've seen the Aggro Sharn Gardens your deck. Um, what else is in the deck? Is it like a beast burst or something? Wow. Turn six, uh, whatchamacallit? Seems unlikely. I'm glad I drew a uh, Snuffle Guardian. Not glad that I'm gonna be dead over two. Cookie's good. Cookie's been very good. It's been good against all the aggressive matchups. Like solo winning games. That's a lot of trading. Which means I can just do this for now, then multicaster. Am I Maelstroming here? I think. Keeps me more minions on average. I'm probably just snowfalling next turn anyways. So I get a bit of face damage out of it too. Come. Never mind about the minions that I'm keeping. I haven't seen this. Okay. Seems quite good for me. And the reason why this looks quite good for me is because they've board locked themselves. Which means that they can't actually kill me next turn unless they get Gore Howl and two weapon hits to the face with a smite here, which is unlikely. Okay. Excellent. This is why you don't want to board lock yourself against Trauma. Now you don't have outs. If they just held back a blood sail, they would have won here, and now they lose. I 
I didn't do the math on this. I have two burn spells, plus three spell damage. I have plus six spell damage, actually. Yeah, it's, it's not good. What if they want Sherwin to Starfish? Then they don't have enough mana for Smite, Mr. Smartass. 